Hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Alan O'Neill. Uh, this is my first time at IAD and my first introduction to the American Acne and Rosacea Society. So I'd like to thank the committee for giving me a chance to present some of my data today. So I'm just going to give a, a brief introduction to uh, the role and the importance of sea acnes uh, in the skin. Um, and as you know, it's, the name has been changed from Propionibacterium to sea acnes now. Um, and I just want to mention some of the basic uh, concepts and aspects of its biology that's important in the context of the work that we do in the lab. Um, so as you know, C. acnes is the dominant bacteria on the sebaceous rich skin and in uh, the phyllosebaceous unit um, where it can exist as uh, multiple phylotypes as a community and also exist with other organisms uh, depicted below such as Staphylococcus epidermidis. Um, but specifically, C. acnes has historically or classically been regarded as the etiological agent of acne, but we know now that it's ubiquitous on healthy skin, so it, fulfill, it fails to fulfill uh, Cox postulates. Um, but what we do know is that if you uh, shift the environment, you can also shift or alter the behavior of C. acnes. For instance, in our lab, when we grow the bacteria under hypoxic conditions and we provide a, a lipid source like glycerol, they can produce these immunomodulatory metabolites uh, short chain fatty acids, which we've shown to that they promote or enhance inflammation in keratinocytes and sebocytes. So, like other uh, skin diseases like atopic dermatitis, acne can also be characterized by a dysbiosis of the skin microbiome. Um, so, in 2013, there was a study done in Hu Young Lee's lab uh, where they showed C. acne's ribotypes were uh, significantly associated with acne. And then later on, they also reported that there was no change in the abundance of C. acnes uh, in acne skin versus healthy controls. Um, so um, we kind of moved away a bit from this outdated model um, where you still see many studies and articles uh, incorrectly attributing acne to a C. acnes infection. Um, and likewise, many graphical illustrations, one that I highlight here, which was a recent review, where they depict uh, hyperproliferating organisms in the follicle and also in the spacious gland, but um, there's no real strong evidence to, to support this. Um, instead, we kind of embrace a new concept that maybe there are more pathogenic lineages or pathogenic strains of C. acnes um, that could mediate inflammation and be important for disease. So what are some of these factors um, which uh, mediate inflammation, some of the factors which are known? Well, we know that two major uh, receptors, the TLR2 and the protease activated receptor 2, uh, these have been shown to be activated by C. acnes and produce inflammation. So kind of surface components like lipotaic acid from uh, C. acnes and peptidoglycan combine to TLR2 and activate this receptor. Uh, also, it's been recently proposed that this uh, uh, hemolytic toxin CAMP uh, combine to TLR2. Um, they also produce other molecules and metabolites, such as the porphyrins, which um, are also proposed to be inflammatory. And again, likewise, we've shown uh, under hypoxic conditions, uh, C. acnes can uh, incorporate and metabolize glycerol to produce short-chain fatty acids. Uh, these short-chain fatty acids can diffuse into keratinocytes and sebocytes. They inhibit histone deacetylases, and they can enhance inflammation. Uh, but these are only a, a limited number of factors and metabolites that have been reported, and um, um, I'm sure there are much more uh, to be discovered. So the goal of this study was to conduct a high-throughput and high-resolution screen to discover bioactive compounds or molecules from C. acnes. Um, so just to comment, uh, you've heard me say phylotype and, and ribotype. So uh, C. acnes um, is separated into six uh, major phylogenetic lineages uh, here, and then you can uh, sequence type these by doing 16S ribotyping, uh, but kind of the gold standard uh, for typing would be multilocus sequence typing um, by eight or nine uh, housekeeping genes on what we do is uh, we do single locus sequence typing. So that separates C. acnes into 41 distinct sequence types. And then, so the experimental design of this study was we took, um, we took facial swabs from the cheek uh, uh, with lesional and non-lesional sites of acne patients and healthy controls. So we streaked them onto blood agar and then we sequenced them by single locus sequence typing. Uh, we grow the bacteria uh, under hypoxic conditions with glycerol 
and we exposed uh, SEB1 sebacites to sterile filtered supernatants from these isolates. And then, our, uh, then we measure IL-8 or inflammation by ELISA. And so if we just look at the frequency of C acnes that we find on the skin, um, so on the left you've got the four major phylotypes, and then within those phylotypes you've got the different sequence types that we found. So just on the top, uh, in the major phylotype 2, these K sequence types, well, we found that they were very frequent uh, on healthy skin, uh, but not so on the uh, lesional acne skin. In contrast, if you look uh, at the bottom, these C1 and C2 sequence types, um, on lesional skin, they were really frequent, but this wasn't the case on the non-lesional sites. And likewise, we couldn't detect any of the C1 or C2 sequence types on healthy skin. So this is just the, uh, the functional data from the screen. Uh, so we did lesional and non-lesional, but I'm just showing you the healthy versus lesional. Um, so we're measuring IL-8 here. And again, at the bottom, we have the four major phylotypes that we found in our study. And then within those phylotypes, you have the different sequence types. So um, just the first thing to, to show is that we found a significant difference in inflammation between uh, C. acne's phylotypes. So again, in the healthy isolates, uh, just showing that the 1A2 phylotype was significantly more inflammatory than the 1B. But what was um, particularly interesting for us was that we found a significant difference in inflammation even between sequence types within the same phylotype. So in the healthy isolates, we found that D1 isolates were significantly more inflammatory than A1. And also in lesional isolates as well, these uh, C2 sequence types, which I've shown to be frequent on lesional skin, they were significantly more inflammatory than the A5. Um, but what also caught our attention from this data as well was that we actually saw differences of isolates even within the same sequence type. So in the red box, we saw uh, for the K2 strain, we saw several isolates which induced quite a robust uh, IL-8 response, but there were other uh, isolates which uh, didn't. Also, this was the same in the lesional for the C2 sequence types as well. So we went on to validate this. Um, so what we could actually uh, uncover was um, uh, strains which were high cytokine inducers and low cytokine inducers, even within the same sequence types. So there's multiple sequence types there. And we wanted to know, well, what could be the potential mechanisms that mediate this difference? Well, we know in our lab we've, uh, we've published on the short chain fatty acids and shown that they enhance and promote inflammation. Um, so we analyzed the supernatants of these functionally distinct strains uh, by GCMS, and what we found that there was no difference in either the type or the abundance of short-chain fatty acid produced. So these are just the major uh, short-chain fatty acids uh, produced on top, and also some of the more kind of uncharacterized branch short-chain fatty acids. Um, so instead, we think that um, it's probably a protein or a peptide that could be mediating this response. Um, so we looked at uh, TLR2 and PAR2, the two major uh, receptors um, that have been shown to activate it by C. acnes. And what we found was that after TLR2 and PAR2 knockdown, uh, inflammation was partially reduced uh, for the high cytokine, the high cytokine and for the low cytokine inducers. Uh, but this activation probably doesn't explain uh, the difference in activity for the high and the low cytokine. So uh, we also started to look at the different inflammatory pathways that could be activated by these functionally distinct strains. So in some of our high uh, cytokine inducers, we find that the NF-kappa B pathway is activated at later time points. We didn't find um, any difference in the MACK activation, uh, but we did see uh, activation of the PI3 kinase pathway at earlier time points. So kind of this is ongoing at the moment. We're examining, uh, at least from the host side, um, again, looking at these functionally distinct strains, whether or not they activate different receptors or different inflammatory signaling pathways. And then from the bacteria side, we're also doing some uh, proteomic analysis as well, just trying to identify a protein or peptide that could be made, uh, mediating this response. And also recently, we've done whole genome uh, sequencing as well of these high and low cytokine inducers. So we have a collaborator that's analyzing this uh, data for us, but at least preliminary it seems that we have a couple of uh, several candidate uh, virulence genes that are unique to the high cytokine inducing strains, but not the low cytokine inducing strains. Um, so just in conclusion, uh, what I've shown you is that we find these C1 and C2 sequence types are enriched on acne lesions, but not on the non-lesions. Uh, and also, um, we find that uh, different sequence types can induce a different inflammation, 
but also that sequence type alone can't predict inflammation. Uh, also, the inflammation is TLR2 and PAR2 dependent, but our main approach is to do a um, mass spec analysis um, and proteomic analysis to try and identify what could be mediating this response. And as I said, we're currently analyzing the whole genome sequencing and also looking at single nucleotide polymorphisms to see if uh, this could be involved in the inflammation. And with that, I'd like to thank my collaborator, uh, Richard Gallo, uh, and a lot of other members of the lab who have helped a lot, as well as Dr. Tong and Dr. Hatton in the UCSD clinic for providing some of the, the samples. Um, our collaborator at UCSD, who's doing the analysis of the whole genome sequencing, and Professor Maudlin as well, who's provided some uh, strains relevant to this work. Um, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we don't find any difference between the, the growth rate. So we've looked at the growth rate of all of these strains, uh, and they're quite similar. Uh, when we grow them in glycerol, they grow a little bit uh, to a higher density, but we try to pick the strains which have similar OD patterns. And also we, we looked at LDH release and some other assays from the cells when they're exposed to these bacteria, and it's not the case that one particular strain is more cytotoxic, for instance, than the other. Um, situation and P-acnes could get directly get in touch with the sibocytes? Um, so I always get this question. That's, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we use the sibocytes as a model. Um, we, I've done uh, a lot of these assays in keratinocytes as well. So uh, we've shown that uh, the response to keratinocytes and sibocytes are very, very similar. Um, but in terms of when they contact the, uh, the sibocytes, well, the assays that I do is looking at the supernatant, so the secreted products. In terms of if, if I was doing a live infection or um, you know, different uh, intracellular fractions or something like that, it's probably not too relevant. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that the, the, the secreted factors that they produce when they uh, hydrolyze triglycerides, for instance, of the follicle, it's, it, I mean, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I would say it, it's, that's how they would come into contact with sebocytes. Thank you.